Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a closer look at the concept variance. What does it mean? What does it really truly represent? Well, it's part of something we're going to be talking about in the future called the standard deviation, but on its own, what does that value really mean? So let's go back to what we were doing before. We had two towns. In each of the two towns, five houses were sold. Those were the sale prices of the five houses. We calculated the mean or the average house price for each of the towns. And we noted that for town A, even though generally the houses were cheaper, it had a larger or higher mean in the sale price because one of the houses sold for a very high price. In town B, the mean re represented more closely the typical house price. And you can see that therefore the average for town B has a lot more meaning than the average for town A because the one expensive house really skewed the mean. Then we calculated for both towns the mean absolute variance. Now in the previous video, or two videos ago, we showed you how to calculate the mean absolute variance for town B and end up being $24,000. In other words, the typical or average difference between the house price and the average house price was $24,000 in town B. Again, that gives you an indication that the house prices were all fairly close together. But for town A, because one of the houses was sold for a much bigger price than the other four, the mean absolute variance the average difference between the average value of the house and the house prices is a much greater number, $280,000. Because notice the difference between the average and the really expensive house was $700,000. And even the cheaper houses, the difference between the cheaper houses and the average was a fairly large value as well. So the average or mean absolute variance was a very big number. But now, what do we mean by the variance? Remember the difference again between the variance and the sample variance. If we, if we have the values that we're dealing with is the total population, all of the houses sold, then we use this calculation and we do divide by the total number value seen. However, if we take a sampling, let's say this were just five houses sold, a typical a typical representation of five houses out of a total population of a big city, let's say a thousand houses were sold and at random we just grabbed five houses, then we do a sample variance and then we have to divide by n minus one. If n is a small number, let's say five, five minus one is four and there's a big difference between dividing by five or dividing by four. If your sample is a large number, let's say 100 houses out of a total of 1,000 sold, then 100 minus 1 is 99, and it's, there's not a lot of difference between dividing by 100 or dividing by 99. But now when we calculate for each of the two towns, A and B, the variance, which is represented by S squared, and the variance is the, is the equation here, it's the difference between the average price and the price of each house. You take that difference and you square that number, you sum up all those, and then you divide by the total number of houses sold, then you get what we call the variance. Now let's see what happens when we calculate the variance for town A and the variance for town B. Since we have to square the differences, you get some very big values, but it also increases the difference between what we get for town A versus town B when the variances are greater in town A. Notice when we square each of the differences between the average and the actual house prices, $700,000, $140,000, $160,000, those are large differences. We square them and then we divide by five and we get a very big number, $123.2 billion. As opposed to for town B, where the variances are much smaller, if we square them, and again, I know that these are negative values, but it doesn't matter. Well, these are negative values here, but it doesn't matter because we squared them anyway. So when we square them all and divide by five, we only get 800 million. Notice that the difference between the mean absolute variance for town A and the mean absolute variance for town B is about a factor of 10 to one. But when we square the values, now the difference is more than 100 to 1. So you can see that you get a much bigger difference when you calculate the variance rather than the mean absolute variance. The mean absolute vari variance just works with the actual differences, but the variance deals with the differences squared. When you sum all those up, you get some very big numbers. And so you can see that 
when there's more variation in the prices or more variation in the numbers you're looking at, when you, when you calculate the variance, you get a much bigger difference compared to the one where you have less variation in the numbers. And that's sometimes why we use the variance rather than the mean absolute variance. It all depends what your purpose is. And later on, when we start talking about, uh, talking about the standard deviation, you'll see why we use something called the variance. And that is how it's done.